Hello crafty friends, welcome to the next instalment of Pigment Powders 101. Today we're going to be making our own embossing powders using pigment powders. So in front of me I have my luscious powders and a couple of homemade embossing powders that I made with the purple and the green. But you don't have to use luscious powders, you can experiment with whatever pigment powders that you already have. So as I've got green and purple already made, I'm not going to use those today. And as I've already got gold embossing powder and copper embossing powder, I'm not going to make those today. So that leaves me with teal and raspberry jam. And I've got these little pots with the screw cap. And these I bought from Amazon. They were really cheap. They came, I think, in a bag of maybe 25 or something. I'm sure you'll be able to source them wherever you are. You might find these or slightly bigger ones in the travel section of a of a pound store or a pharmacist or something. What I'm going to do is pop loads of clear embossing powder in. So that's it's not full, but it's it's on its way. And then I'm going to take a dollop of pigment powder and add that. Now you'll have to experiment with the ratio of pigment powder to clear embossing powder with whatever pigment powders you've got. But the idea is that the pigment in these powders will colour and mix in with the clear embossing powder and give you a coloured embossing powder. So just screw the lids on and give them a good shake to mix the pigment powder with the clear embossing powder. So once they've had a good shake and they're mixed, they are now ready to go. For today's card, I'm going to do some stamping and heat embossing and die cutting using this square frame die. And I want the bit in the middle and I also want the frame, but I'll cut that out of something separate, I think. So I'm just gonna pop this on here and draw the frame so I know where to put the stamps. So I've got a big B here, we'll pop that there, and a little flying B, and another B. We'll just move those in so they're in the middle, about there. So now I can pick those up and treat that with my anti-static powder tool and ink these with embossing ink. Press them down and I think I'll do that twice just to make sure I get a good impression. So I think for today's card, I will use the raspberry jam embossing powder that I've just made and sprinkle that over my bees. Tuck that off and pop that back in its jar. Now don't worry about the fact that you can still see some of the pigment around the bees. That should buff off when I have heat embossed it. So I'm going to heat emboss it like I normally would any clear embossing powder. So now that my embossing powder has cooled and set, I can buff off any colour with a microfiber cloth. And what I'm going to do next is die cut my little square from this. So what I'm doing now is just trimming this square down so it's a bit smaller and then when I pop it back in there there'll be a small gap between the two. I think I just need a little bit more off this side. And what I want to do next is I want to add some more of that purple, no pink, embossing powder 
to the frame so that the frame is a solid pink. So I'll just ink up the frame using the embossing ink and pour over my powder. So that is a little bit patchy, so I'm just going to do that whole thing again. So now I've got my frame and my B panel. I'm going to do a little bit more to the B panel in a minute, I think, because it's looking a little bit empty. But before I do that, I'm going to prepare the front panel on my card. So I've got here an embossing folder with a honeycomb or hexagon pattern on it. So I'm going to run that through my cuttle bug, making sure it's nice and straight. So I've got a lovely honeycomb pattern on there and my B, I think, my B panel will go there and the frame will go there. But as I say, I think I need something else on this. So I've got here a tiny little flower stamp and I'm going to stamp on in milled lavender in and around the bees to carry on that bee botanical theme. There we go, so there's a bit more pattern there, which I like. And I'm gonna take some raspberry jam paint that I made and showed in mm, the last video, making paints video. And I make a little bit of paint there and do a little bit of splattering. Now that's quite strong. So I'm just gonna take some paper towel and roll that over and hopefully that will reduce the smudging. And now I'm going to assemble my card. So my card blank is smooth white cardstock. It is four by seven inches. My card panel is a little bit smaller. Just going to pop some tape on the back. Oh, if my tape runner is going to play ball. And I'm going to add some glue to the back of this. And to remove excess glue so it doesn't squidge out all over my card front, I'll just blot up some of that glue with some deli paper. And I'm going to pop my square up on foam so there's a bit of extra dimension there. So what I want to do is put something on top of the panel and I don't actually have a bee die that would be ideal really I think but I do have flowers, so I'm going to create a vellum flower using these dies and then think about what sentiment I'm going to put on top. So I've got three sizes of flower now. I'm going to put a bit of glue in the middle. And pop some glue on the back. And then I can add this. I'm wondering if the flower might be too big it's covering up too much of the bees so i think i'll just go with the two flowers there so we can still see the bees what i want is a scrap of white cardstock and then i'm going to put some embossing ink on it and get my pink my raspberry jam Embossing powder. And heat that to create 
a patch of sparkly embossed card and I'm going to let that cool properly and then use my little circle dies to cut some circles. I think we will go over to the side so we capture plenty. There we go, lots of lovely circles there. Let's see. And I'm going to use some tacky glue. Take one of the big circles and add that to the centre of my flower. And then dot a couple of smaller circles here and there. This just adds a bit more texture and colour to the background. I can use it to cover up any blemishes that I don't like. In fact, what I might do is I might double up that flower centre. I think like that. So it stands up a bit more. And we'll just flick those petals up so they're not flat. So for my sentiment, I've got a little stamp that says sending love from all of us and I'm stamping it in black ink on white card. That's come out fine. And I'm going to cut this out using my stitch banner die. It's a bit long, so we'll just shorten it. So to shorten this, all I'm going to do is pop my die cut back in the die and move it along until the teeth of the stitch pattern lock with the pattern on the die cut. And now I can run this through again. I only need to run that little bit at the end through so I can stop once that's done. There we go. And that I think will tuck in nicely there. So I want a little bit of foam from the From All Of Us part. And I'll pop a little bit of glue under the front end to stop it flapping around. And to give my flower centre a little bit more dimension, I'm just going to add some glossy accents. And when that dries, that'll be a nice clear dome on top of that. So there we go, a clean and simple card made using DIY embossing powders, which were made using pigment powders and clear embossing powder. As I said earlier, you will need to experiment with the pigment powders and clear embossing powders that you have. You could try mixing pigment powders with other embossing powders. You might have good results with white embossing powder. It might give you some nice pastel shades, but you'll just have to experiment. Experiment with the powders, with the embossing powders, experiment with the ratio of pigment to embossing powder and give it a go. And if you make any cards using your DIY embossing powders, then come along to my Facebook group and share photos there. I would really love to see what you've made. And if you'd like to be notified when the next episode of this Pigment Powders 101 series airs, then hit the subscribe and notification buttons and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.